You're listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast, where we unpack the meaning of books, passages, and themes from Scripture. Join us each week as Dr. David Klingler walks us through God's Word and teaches the Bible. Each episode has a study guide available in the show notes. This is Teach Me the Bible podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Teach Me the Bible podcast. I'm Alex Wolf, and again, here with Dr. David Klingler. And uh, today we're in the book of Philippians. In fact, Mm -hmm. we're three, or we're actually four weeks in. We did an introduction in the first three chapters. Uh, And today we're wrapping up the book in chapter four. Uh, So just want to, before we jump in, just want to give you a a quick reminder uh, to go check out our other resources, teachmethebible.com. That's an ever-growing resource for you to continue to uh, grow in your understanding of the Word of God. And that's really our mission, to help the people of God understand the Word of God. And so if you haven't already, please go check that out. Um, everything on there at the moment is absolutely free to you. And so uh, so jump on, check it out, and, uh, and grow in your understanding of God's Word. But today, uh, hopefully you've been with us for the last four weeks. If not, uh, we'll push you back to the beginning. Go check that out. But today we're picking up in chapter four with a big therefore, which means you need to know what came before. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. Help us, help us remember what came before. Well, uh, you know, you, you just, just glance at, uh, at that beginning of chapter four. And of course, we, as we've said, almost every week, it seems, you know, this is a letter. It's a unified letter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you can't just take a verse, uh, you, you, know, you know, or you can't even begin in, in a uh, in like a chapter. Therefore, well, you look, you just glance at this and say, back uh, in chapter three, verse twenty, for our citizenship is is in heaven. Well, you you can't even start there. That's uh, what we would call a a gar. And then we go back to chapter uh, chapter three, verse eighteen. For many walk. Well, you can't start there. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. brethren, join in following my example and observe those who walk according to the pattern which you have in us. That's back in 317. Mm-hmm. For many walk. So walk as we walk. For many walk, I've often told you, and, and now even tell you weeping, they're enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. In contrast to that, for our citizenship is in heaven. So follow our example, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we eagerly await a uh, a Savior, Christ the Lord, who will transform the body of our humble state into conformity with the body of his glory by the exertion of the power uh, that he has even to subject all things or all to himself. And, of course, that was, you know, the continuation of chapter 3, what mm-hmm. he's talked about in chapter 3, that right. uh, he's not attained this perfection yet. And mm-hmm. so so all that to, to say that uh, that you can't separate anything once you get into a letter Mm-hmm. Uh, you've kind of entered into the the world of Paul's writing, addressing these people. There's a specific situation. Uh, you remember that uh, uh, that these Philippians had been with Paul all the way uh, from the beginning uh, of his ministry. They've supported him. He uh, says that in chapter one. Uh, meanwhile, they're they're being persecuted. They've got these outside influencers who are who are saying that uh, that Paul is cursed. Uh, that's why he's in prison. That's why these bad things are happening to him. And to compound all that, when Epaphrodites carries the message or carries the, the gift from the Philippians, he turns up sick. And so now Paul's really concerned that they might uh, turn away from following the gospel um, because they have set their mind on earthly things. Uh, well, it turns out uh, that... Uh, uh, you know that that he's in, he's encouraged, uh, but he's he's exhorting them uh, to continue in their faithfulness. So uh, so he's appealing to this resurrection. Therefore, my beloved brethren, whom I long to see, my joy and my crown, stand firm in the Lord. That's mm-hmm. that's the reason why you stand firm firm in the Lord, mm-hmm. because resurrection is coming. That's my good. beloved, I urge uh, Udia and I urge Syntyche. To live in harmony in the Lord, indeed, true yoke fellow or something like that. I ask also that you help these women who shared in my struggle in the struggle of the gospel, together with Clement also and the rest of the fellow workers whose names are in the in the book of life. Remember back in chapter one, I think it might have been in the introduction or chapter one, 
Uh, this letter is addressed to Paul, Paul and Timothy, bond servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi, including the overseers and deacons. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this gives us at least <clears throat> some indication of the role of overseers or shepherds. And, mm-hmm. uh, and so he's addressing all of these uh, overseers and deacons that they would keep this unity in the body and address this one specific situation in particular. And then he continues in verse 4, Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your forbearing spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing. In the midst of suffering, sorrow, persecution, false claims, the claim that God is against you because you're for the gospel, Mm -hmm. look at why Paul's in prison, all of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, In everything, in prayer prayer and uh, supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, all all mind, will guard your hearts and your mind, uh, minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, of good repute, uh, if there's anything excellent, anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. Of course, these are all things that Paul has modeled. He's, right. uh, he said, Beck, join in, in following my example. And, mm-hmm. uh, and so that's back in chapter 3, verse 17. Uh, and he hits it right here in uh, chapter 4, verse 9. The things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, those are the things <clears throat> that you're to, to mm-hmm. do. And the peace of God will be with you. Um, verse 10, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, if uh, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. In other words, he, he wasn't sure. He didn't know where they were in this thing, but now he's, he's assured. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I'm in. I've learned to be content, you know, when I'm out sharing the gospel free. I've learned to be content when I'm being persecuted. I've learned to be content when I'm in prison, Paul says. Uh, I know how to get along with humble means, and I know how to get along when I live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry. And, of course, it's back to this chapter 3, that I may know him, know his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death. <clears throat> Not that I've already obtained it, but I press toward the goal of the prize of the upward. Co- that's, his, mm-hmm. that's his secret. His mm-hmm. secret is pressing forward to resurrection, mm-hmm. the hope of resurrection. Um, verse 12, I know how to get along with humble means. And I know how to get, get along with living in prosperity. In every, uh, any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You talk about a verse that is always taken out of context. Mm-hmm. That's it. <clears throat> so what are the all things that he can do through Christ who strengthens him? Uh, it's verse 12. Uh, it is knowing how to live in humble means, knowing how to live in prosperity. In every circumstances, he's learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you've done well to share in my uh, affliction. Uh, this is an important point because um, Paul is not concerned, and we're going to see this here in just a second. Paul is not concerned that the Philippians are supporting Paul. Paul is is concerned and thankful that the Philippians are supporting the gospel. Mm. I don't I don't need your money. I I I can get along with everything. I can get along with nothing. I'm mm. amply supplied, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so this is in verse 15. And you yourselves know Philippians that at the first preaching of the gospel after I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, but you alone. For even in Thessalonica, you sent a gift more. Than once for my needs, not that I seek the gift itself, and this is his point, but I seek the profit which increases for your account. Mm. But I have received everything in full. I have an abundance. I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphrodites what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ. This is a great ending. Mm-hmm. Greet every saint in Christ. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's <laughs> household. Mm-hmm. Now, you'll recall back in chapter 1 that Paul's in prison. Uh, and um, 
Uh, and he says this back in chapter 1, verse 12. Now, I want you to know, brethren, that my circumstances, the circumstances, imprisonment, <clears throat> have turned out for the greater progress of the gospel, so that my imprisonment in Christ has become well known throughout the whole Praetorian Guard and everyone else. And then most of the brethren, trusting in the Lord because of my imprisonment, have far more courage to speak the word of God without fear. Some, to be sure, are preaching God out of envy and strife. Others out of goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I'm appointed to the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition rather than pure motives, thinking that they cause me distress in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in this I will rejoice. Uh, and so his in prison, he, he's in prison, his, uh, uh, you know, in Christ, it's become well known throughout the whole Praetorian Guard and everyone else, to the to the point that most of the brethren have more confidence to share the gospel. So mm -hmm. he's saying, "Here I am." They think that I'm locked up. They think that the gospel is imprisoned, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sharing the gospel with the Praetorian Guard. And oh, by the way, they all say hello. Right? <laughs> what, a, what a great ending! Uh, the saints greet you. Uh, you know, the holy ones, those who have believed the gospel, they mm -hmm. greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. So tell me how this is a curse again. Mm -hmm. Christ Amen. is being proclaimed. The gospel is spreading. People outside have more confidence. Inside of Caesar's household, uh, there are believers now mm -hmm. where there weren't before. Uh, and so uh, he finishes with uh, chapter 4, verse 23, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, uh, be with your spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, and so <clears throat> it's a this letter... Uh, that Paul writes is a, you know, many would say it's a it's a thank you letter. Um, well, it is, um, but uh, but he has concerns. There's an antagonist. There's an antagonist theology that says if you serve the Lord, you're blessed. Um, Paul must not be serving the Lord because he's not being blessed. He's being persecuted. Uh, and Paul, one of the things that I really like about this uh, this letter is uh, it's at the end of chapter one uh, when Paul says, "Only conduct yourself." In a, in a manner worthy of the gospel. This is in 127. So that whether I come and see you or remain absent, I may hear that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind, that's the mind of Christ, striving together for the faith of the gospel. And this is the verse I really like. In no way alarmed by opponents, mm -hmm. which is a sign of destruction yeah. for them, but of salvation for you. And that too is from God. In other words, uh, they imprison you, they beat you, they persecute you, uh, Paul, all the things that Paul is going through, and it doesn't even cause you to flinch. Mm -hmm. You say, well, that's how it's supposed to go. Mm -hmm. And they say, wait a second, what? Right? Um, you know, the pagan theology is always serve God, fill in the blank, and it will go well for you. <clears throat> but um, but you better figure out what serving God means and, and say, well, I would agree with that. You serve the Lord. And it will go well with you. Um, but you better figure out how to serve the Lord, and you better figure out when it will mm. go well for you. Yeah, that's good. And so Paul Big is deal. focused on resurrection. Yeah. Present suffering, mm -hmm. future reward. It's mm -hmm. Paul's theology. It's the Bible's theology. So good. So, I mean, it. it's amazing how, well, it's obvious now we get, that we're at the end of it, but Paul gives exactly what they need in their exact situation to stand firm. Sure. I mean, that, you know, the, these, these, uh, accusations being leveled against Paul and he's saying, things are going well. <laughs> you know, the gospel's going on, stick, <laughs> stick it out with me, stand firm. And he reminds them of resurrection. It's exactly what they needed to continue on to stand firm in, in their participation with this gospel. There's so. this thought that I, I, it's, it's not in the Bible, but it's just, it's just <laughs> interesting to me that, you know, uh, Paul's been out there. He's been, you know, going on these missionary journeys, mm -hmm. he's going one place to another, he's getting mm -hmm. beaten everywhere he goes. Now he's in prison, he's getting three squares a day, uh, <laughs> and the guards are switching one after another, and he's sharing the gospel with all of them. Now they're all coming to Christ, and, uh, you know, and, and the brethren say hello, you know. Yeah, just, that's you know, so good. There, there's no suffering here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we're, I've shared the gospel, with, you know, and, and so the, all of Caesar's household says yeah. hello, by the way. Yeah. Yep, um, that's so you know, and, and so because of that, yeah. um, the, the gospel's going out with even more. Yeah. So, they, so you know, God does things that we yeah. don't understand. And, they can't read this letter and think that Paul is still under curse. Right. I mean, you can't come to that conclusion. And right. So it's exactly his point, and yeah. I think that's great. So 
Awesome. Well, thank you uh, for walking us through that book. Such an incredible book. So helpful to understand uh, how it all fits together as Absolutely. a single unified letter. And so um, we're going to continue on in going through individual books of the Bible chapter by chapter. So uh, don't hesitate to to come back and, and, and tune in for our next one. But we're glad you joined us today. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast. Our desire is to use the power of God's word to change lives. For more information, download our app. Join us next week for another episode of Teach Me the Bible.